start off with a full charge just to see what this thing is going to do. If it's anything like M80A1, I don't even know if I have enough gel blocks to contain it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the Ammo Nerd, and we have a very brief ammunition review today because I have a limited amount of this and pretty much I don't have a lot of data on it. But I wanna do a gel test on our 6.8 by 51 millimeters, not the normal 113 grain reduced range load that everyone else has tested, but I have the actual XM1186 or general purpose round, or another name would be called the enhanced performance round EPR. It's 120 grains with a copper core and a very long and hard steel penetrating tip. Let's take a closer look at these guys in the table and talk about what we're gonna do today. As I mentioned, this ammunition review is probably gonna be very brief because I only have the one barrel length that is the SIG MCX Spear, the commercial offering. It has a 16 inch barrel. There is the M7, which is the US Army's NGSW. It has the 13 inch barrel. I know they have an M7A1 variant that has an 11 inch barrel and there is a SIG Cross that has a 20 inch. So right now we just have the 16 inch. So we have our 10% clear ballistics gel and we're just going to be at 12 feet so that we can ensure that we actually hit the gel. And we have two variants of this bullet that we're going to test. We have the original variant that we picked up from War Pig Armory that has no cantalures machined on that jacket. And then we have some that we picked up off Gun Broker that have three or four cantalures machined on the outside of it. I'm not sure if that's going to either aid in fragmentation or detract from it. We're going to take a few shots of this just from what I have load data wise, we're gonna step all the way down to around 1800 feet per second and see if there is a fragmentation threshold that where this bullet will stop fragmenting and likely then it will just tumble in our clear ballistics gel. We have our clear ballistics gel blocks set up at 12 feet. They're six by six by 16, the 10% variant. They've been remelted a couple times, but the first one is very clear. We're gonna start off with a full charge just to see what this thing is gonna do. If it's anything like M80A1, I don't even know if I have enough gel blocks to contain it. Did not get a velocity reading off that. All right, my offset was wrong on the first shot. Didn't get a velocity reading. We're gonna try a little bit higher this time. Shot number two. Still didn't get a velocity. Might be too short of a distance. All right, my offsets are a little off at seven feet. I have that dialed up for 45, so we are shooting quite a bit low, but we're still on the block, and what I see is almost an instantaneous neck off our XM1186. Look at that violent fragmentation occurring up to about the six inch mark, and then it settles down, and this is where the EPR round gets nasty. Let me zoom out. But we have this upward traversal right there, and that is the penetrator. I did not locate it, although I see two fresh ding marks on my steel there. It looked like it could be off and never, never land. And then we have a separate wound track right down there, and that's the base. And it's gonna be hard to see in this crappy gel. Again, I'm doing this the best I can. That's 30 inches of penetration right there. Very much identical to the first shot there. We shot that one a little lower, but we've got that fragmentation occurring. Then we have that split off right there. Then the penetrator goes that way, and then the core is straight line. We did recover the core. It's just a little copper slug. We'll show you that in a second. But at full power from a 16 inch, that's 3,200 feet per second from what I've checked before. That is pretty darn amazing. I think maybe for the second shots, we'll go down to the lowest charge I have. And then if it tumbles, then we can work our way up to see where that velocity is going to cause it to continue to fragment out. But that's gnarly. Pretty much just like M80A1, we have a little more penetration than M855A1, obviously because that penetrator is longer. But wow, uh, I wouldn't want to get hit with that at all, folks. 
Here is a bottom down shot. It looks like most of that fragmentation from that jacket extends out to right around the nine and a half inch, maybe 10 inch mark to where it seems to calm down. And the rest of what is left for penetration is the tip and the core. You could argue either way. Usually from what I understand is we want more of that fragmentation to start past the five inch mark up to, you know, penetration depths. But we're still seeing that fragmentation out to about the 10 inch mark. All right, we brought out the two slowest charges that I have. These are the cantaloured bullets. There's a 23 and a 25 grain. These should be sub 2000 feet per second if the chronographs will actually pick this up. Fifteen forty four. Fifteen twenty four. Fifteen twenty four. Give you this top down shot, but at fifteen hundred and fifty feet per second, this bullet still has some terminal effect left in it, meaning that the jacket did separate from the core and the penetrator. Our jacket is left mainly whole right there and both shots. Our penetrator tip on the first shot ended right there. Then the core went off into Never Never Land. We'll have to see if we can find that in a second. But on our second shot, we'll come over here. So we've got almost an instantaneous neck mill, well, maybe about an inch. Then that jacket goes out to about the six inch mark. Then what happens is our core in this case dives down to right around the 16 inch mark. But our penetrator, he deviates that way and he's all the way up there. So that's about the 22 inch mark. Could be longer if you laid it out flat, but that's the penetrator base forward. Very, very interesting. So someone who's a lot smarter than me, hopefully can calculate the ballistic coefficient off of the macros that I provide and give me some kind of semblance of at what yardage that 1500 feet per second would equate to. But that's pretty darn amazing folks. Very, very impressive terminal performance, even at that handicap. It's gonna be hard to see, but that core on that first shot made it right around to the 18 to 19 inch mark. We'll step up the powder charge to 30 grains this time. That was the non cantaloupe version. And now the cantaloupe version. 21.25. Somewhat different results this time at that increase of velocity of about 500 feet per second. We have some disruption almost instantaneously, about a half inch there, and it calms down. But right around the seven to eight inch mark, we get that split again, and the split completes right around the 12 inch mark. It looks like the non cantaloupe jacket made it to 12 inches, but the cantaloupe jacket made it to around 15. And you can see we have the split from the core and then the, or sorry, the penetrator goes out that way. The core continues on, on both samples right down to around the 25 inch mark. I apologize, you can't see these. These are pretty much what I had for gel blocks. And we did find one of the penetrators laying on the table there. So that exceeded, you know, 16 inches there. I'll try to give you a top down shot. It's kind of really hard to see. There's where the penetrator breaks off on the cantaloupe shot. And over here is where it breaks off on the standard. All right, this is our last reduced powder charge load. This is 40 grains. So we should see, I think, 2,500 feet per second. The non cantaloupe version is first. And now the cantaloupe version. 2536. Very, very nice.
So it looks like with our 120 grain EPR or XM 1186 general purpose round, somewhere between 2,500 and 2,100 feet per second is where we start to lose that fragmentation and that jacket goes from exploding to more so peeling apart and expanding. So at 2,500 feet per second, we have all of that fragmentation occurring very, very shortly after initial contact. The bulk of those are extending out to the five inch mark. We have some out to the 10 inch mark. And on the non-cantalured bu bullet, the penetrator made it to the 15 inch mark. On the cantalured version, that guy left the block and who knows where he's at. Both of the cores, again, hard to see, 25 inches of total penetration there. So this round is very, very ideal for terminal ballistics inside of that 16 inch mark and then some if you need a little extra punch. So this should do very well against barriers. Obviously I don't have any barriers to test this against. We've used it in our armor testing and it is very effective and you need a good level four to stop it at least from the 16 inch, you know, obviously with the 13 inch and the newly proposed 10 or 11 inch, that velocity is gonna be down there a little bit, I think from what I saw from Grand Thumb's video, it was like 2,900 feet per second for the RRA, and I'm normally around 3,200 feet per second from the 16 inch, but this stuff is downright amazing, just like M855A1 and M80A1. The lighting today in these blocks aren't doing us any favor, but just like the other ones where we're splitting off, that split is occurring at the seven to eight inch mark and creating two, if not sometimes three separate wound channels that then will split off by at least one, two, three inches there. I am impressed to say the least, and I would have no qualms about using this even out of that 10 inch barrel. Obviously the engagement distance to which you're gonna be able to do this is gonna be shortened with that shorter barrel, but this stuff is nasty. This angle might give you a better idea. This is the 30 grain, so we have all that fragmentation, and then right there around the seven to eight inch mark, is where that tip splits off and because of how long that thing is it's going to tumble and that's going to make itself a pretty wide wound channel as well and then our core the copper is what's left to penetrate in this case when we get that good fragmentation at that higher velocity and here are our marching orders there's what the projectile looks like unfired there was the 1550 the 2000 or 2100 and then the 2500 the jacket obviously fragmented completely and I didn't want to feel like digging all that out of there. Our tips for the most part are unharmed. If they hit my little backer up there, which is made out of metal, they tend to deform a little bit, but very, very impressive. The core is copper. That's not going to deform very much either. Now that in itself, it's wound, wounding capabilities aren't going to be the greatest pretty much because it's a round copper slug, but to get the penetration depths to hit something, past the 18 inch mark, it'll still do it. Nice. Well, folks, I think the takeaway from today's testing is that our EPR bullet or enhanced performance round bullet is a monster when it comes to terminal effect. The combination of our jacket, core, and steel penetrator at the right velocities produce amazing penetration and terminal ballistics. This particular 120 grain EPR or XM 1186 bullet performed all the way out to a simulated range of 800 meters. That's quite a bit of range and we're still getting this thing to break apart. And then when we got up closer, we were still able to fragment out. And when we threw the full velocity at that thing, that wound channel was simply amazing. And we're also able to penetrate other barriers such as body armor with this style bullet. As I mentioned, this particular 120 grain bullet could be an early generation or prototype to the 120 grain EPR XM 1186. I've seen some of the patent mentioned that we've got the four cantalure driving bands and a revised steel penetrating tip in there it has got a boat tail on the front of it and I don't have any access to that. So again, this is just a small sample size of what this bullet is potentially capable of, but I'm impressed. Now, whether or not the NGSW M7 is going to see a lot larger fielding and replacement of the M4 in the US military, that's gonna be hard to say because this particular gun of mine in the 16 inch is like 11 plus pounds. You know, they have that new M7A1 variant is so it's being called that has the 10 or 11 inch barrel. That's I think over a pound lighter and that could play into part there, especially if they're able to crank the velocity of that particular 6.8 cartridge up a little bit to make up for that barrel length because I think they said that cartridge can take up to 
to 120,000 PSI. And I think our XM1186 is running right there around 80,000 PSI. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible because there's a lot that goes into them. Number one is my family. Deacon would like to remind you all to like, subscribe, and share these videos so that a logarithm can work for us and not against us. These videos take a long time to make, so any of that is greatly appreciated. Number two are my YouTube channel members and my Patreon supporters. I have a campsite in the description below. There's very different landing pages. So if you're looking to give back to the channel for this information that I've provided, there's things in there for RMA, uh, Mira Safety, My Medic, et cetera, et cetera. And what I do with all of that is I put it right back in the channel. Number three is Warpig Armory. Again, in full transparency, made these 6.8 projectiles available for us to hand load so that we could have an idea of what this particular bullet is capable of. And of course, number four is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.